Today is a day that will ring throughout history. Because today, we put Juggernaut against Juggernaut. Today, we will compare the end game of end game processors, the Trinov Altitude 32. We will compare it to the Anthem flagship AVM 90. And in the end, there can be only one. Hey guys, Barrett here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. Today we do have something truly epic, and I am very excited to bring you guys the comparison of the Trinov Altitude 32 versus Anthem's AVM90. We will be doing some pretty cool sound demos recorded with a spatial sound binaural microphone, which records the sounds as they are heard in the room. And even though it is a stereo recording, it does an excellent job of spatial sounds. Does one of these processors sound better than the other? We will answer that in today's video. Is the Trinov worth four times the price, we'll also try to answer that in this video. If you're not familiar with these units, they are both an AV processor, and they both can be considered an end game processor, so to speak, depending on your budget. So let's talk price. This isn't exactly apples to apples, but in this case, who cares? This is going to be a lot of fun anyway. The Trinov Altitude 32 is widely considered to be the end gamiest sound processor out there, but with end game status comes an end game price tag. We are looking at about 29,000 US dollars for the 16 channel version. Now that might not not be exact, but it is around that price depending on the amount of channels. Now after hearing a price tag that high, the Anthem AVM90 almost sounds cheap at only 7500 US dollars, but I assure you this is still an end game price tag as well, just in a different budget category. And I know guys, and we all know, that this comparison isn't really fair, but it will be an interesting and fun comparison all the same. And there was some individuals asking this exact question online, and I had an opportunity to answer that question. So I thought, why not put these guys head to head and try and answer that question for them? All right, so moving along, let's talk about what makes each unit special. But really quick before we do, the owner of the Trinov Altitude 32 wanted to remain completely anonymous, but I still wanted to say a huge thank you. You know who you are. It was awfully kind of you to allow me some time with your beautiful processor. I'm sure that there are those out there watching this video that want to thank you as well. So we're not going to give a long list of specs because the specs can be found online. We just want to cover the highlights here. So starting with the luxurious Trinov, it is basically a PC that is pretty much future-proof as the hardware boards can always be upgraded and replaced in the future. And of course, the software can be updated as well. The user interface of the Trinov is very in-depth, so expect a fairly substantial learning curve, but once you master it, you will be able to tailor the sound exactly to your liking, or you could always have a Trinov tech set it up for you. The user interface on the AVM90 is quite in-depth in its own right, but it is more user-friendly with far less in-depth options. So if you are looking for ease of use, I think there is no doubt the Anthem wins here, but if you are looking for the most amount of customization, the Trinov takes the win. When it comes to their room calibrations, the Trinov uses their own optimizer software, which is one and the same of their network-based user interface. It's all tied in together. The AVM90, on the other hand, uses their own software called Anthem Room Correction, or ARC for short. Although there is a learning curve with the Anthem Room Correction as well, it is more user-friendly and simple to use versus the Trinov. So again, if you are looking for ease of use, I think the Anthem is the better choice. If you are looking for more customization options, then I think the Trinov is the better choice. So when it comes to their basic room calibration, without diving into all the customization options or doing too many measurements uh, to help get the sound dialed in exactly how you want it, I would say that they are pretty similar. Now keep in mind, I'm not talking about their sound quality here, simply their calibration for a flat response. Neither of these units were able to get an entirely flat response with my three JTR CAP 2400 subwoofers in my room with just the basic calibration. Now let's have a quick look at their room measurements just to show you guys what I'm talking about. So here is a look at the Trinov with and without the room calibration. You can see that with the room calibration, it does do a better job, but it's still not entirely flat. Now here's a look at the Anthem AVM 90s room measurements, which by the way, RU stands for Room EQ Wizard. It is a free software online. But with this measurement, you can see that without the room calibration, it is worse off. And with the room calibration, it is better. But all in all, I would say that the Trinov did a slightly better job at getting the line flat versus the AVM90. But again, guys, I'll remind you, this was just a basic calibration without any tweaking and with a minimum amount of measurements. One important note, according to the Trinov owner, due to a recent software update, the Trinov is able to calibrate down to 5 hertz. In the past, it was only able to calibrate down to 20 hertz. And in comparison, ARC or Anthem Room Correction calibrates down to 15 hertz. So we will be getting to the binaural audio demos in just a bit, but I want to cover some of the physical differences between the units first. 
first. When it comes to their aesthetics, both units are a good looking piece of modern equipment. It really comes down to your personal preference, which you like better. It is important to point out that the Trinov is quite a bit heavier at 32 pounds versus the AVM 90s 22 pounds. The Trinov is also physically bigger, but mostly in its depth. They are both six and a half inches high and just over 17 inches wide, but the Trinov is 17 and 9 16 inches deep, whereas the AVM 90 is only 15.9 inches deep. This makes a difference for those of you wanting to place them in a rack. So in my case, the Trinov was a little too deep. I would need to get a deeper rack if I ever wanted to get one, but the AVM 90 fits just perfectly. The last thing I want to point out here is that the AVM 90 currently uses HDMI 2.1 boards, allowing for 8K 60 Hertz or 4K 120 Hertz. The Trinov is currently using HDMI 2.0 boards, which is only capable of 4K 60 Hertz. Trinov will offer an upgraded board in the future, but there will be a cost for those looking to upgrade. All right, so that's enough of the boring talk. Let's get into some demos and then discuss what the audible differences are. For the demos, room calibration was enabled on both units. All three subwoofers were also enabled for both units. We also made efforts to ensure that they would be level matched and they are level matched within about a half a dB or so. It's of course difficult to get it perfect. As I mentioned before, I am using a spatial binaural recording recording device for the sound, so you should be using a good pair of headphones for the best listening experience, but you should be able to hear some of the surround sound effects if you do use a good set of headphones. But unfortunately, this recorder does not tell you which is the front and which is the back, which does matter for the left and right channels. I made the assumption that the side with the display and buttons was the front. Well, you know what happens when you assume. I was, of course, wrong. I know now, but for this video, you will be hearing the left and right channels reversed, which may be confusing based on what the screen is doing, but now you know you will be hearing the left channels on your right ear and the right channels on your left ear. As with any demo on YouTube, always remember that the recording equipment, my room, and the device that you're listening on will greatly affect the sound, so don't take it as an accurate depiction of what I was hearing in my room. The Trinov demos are lit in blue and the Anthem demos are lit in red, so here's the first demo, which is a Dolby Atmos demo called Amaze. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sets the mood of the scene Let's go! 
Whether the soundscape sets the mood of the scene. Pull your vehicle to the side of the road. captures the full extent of nature's fury.
So what did you guys think about those demos? Did you like the binaural audio over just a standard two-channel audio? Drop your comments down below and let me know what you think. And now that you've heard them for yourselves, let me describe what I was hearing in my room. You guys all know that I love the sound of my Anthem AVM90. I said as much in the review. The AVM90 is very clean and detailed, but also provides some fantastic channel separation. I did compare the AVM90 to the AVM70 in a video, which is linked in the top right-hand corner of this video. But when I did that comparison, that is exactly what I heard. The AVM 90 took the clarity to a new level along with the channel separation and it was just plain better. So what did I hear with the AVM90 versus the Trinov? Well, I have to admit the Trinov is better. I can't say that the channel separation on the Trinov was better per se, but the sound layer separation was noticeably better on the Trinov. And by that, I mean that all the subtleties in the tracks are more pronounced and audible. For example, in the Dolby Nature's Fury demo, there is a spot where you can hear seagulls coming from the upper left side. These can be heard on the AVM90, but they are clearer and more noticeable on the Trinov. And in that same demo, when they show the scuba diver, there are some underwater kind of bubble sounds that are almost inaudible on the AVM90, but they are quite clear and clean on the Trinov and very noticeable. So the strength of the Trinov, in my opinion, is that every detail is there. No matter how subtle, it doesn't get lost in the mess of multiple sounds. Every sound is exactly as clear as it should be. This, of course, does translate to music as well, obviously. The Trinov is just cleaner and the subtle sounds are just more pronounced and clean. When it comes to bass management, I can't really say one is better than the other. Arc is known for its ability to tighten up the bass response. I can say that the Trinov is just as good in that regard. And as we saw with the room measurements, the Trinov was slightly better at getting a flat response, but neither of them were as good as something like a mini DSP. So when it comes to their sound, if you want the absolute cleanest sound where every subtlety is perfectly audible, the Trinov is the clear choice. That isn't to say that the AVM90 is bad, it is absolutely one of the best processors on the market, but the Trinov, being the far more expensive unit, does take things to a new level. Which brings us to the question, is the Trinov worth four times the cost of the AVM90? And as usual, this is tough to answer because everyone has different budgets and different priorities. But if you have the budget and you are looking for the absolute best sound possible, then you want the Trinov. But for me personally, it's pretty simple right now. I don't have the budget for a Trinov. I will be sticking with my AVM90. If I'm ever in the position to buy a Trinov, I would consider it, but that price tag is a tough one to swallow. I hope you guys found this video helpful or at least interesting. Drop your comments about these processors below. Let me know if you'd like to see more comparisons on this channel. If you did enjoy the video, consider subscribing. Tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I always do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you guys would consider supporting the channel by joining my Patreon using the link down in the description below, or by clicking the join button or the thanks button right below this video. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.